Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Solomid.net Invitational number 7. I'm Rap and this is going to be the deciding game 3 between Team Marn, represented down here in the bottom left hand corner on the blue side, going up against 4 nothing Gaming. And you may notice a few other different faces on this team, that is because they do have the Rain Man, formerly of Solomid.net himself, uh, going top lane with Locust, formerly support for Team Dignitas, uh, will be going bottom lane with 4 Noth Parole, Takashi X is here for mid lane, formerly of uh, V8 Gaming. And then they also have one bad Brad, formerly of, well, pretty much solo queue, being a boss in the jungle on Darkfire Shivana. So uh, both teams will possibly meet up here around the red buff uh, for Team Marn. Uh, Marn definitely uh, representing as the Magnificent Twisted Fate. Uh, and together, he and Clakey D representing the fighting game community, already having taken out Team Legion, who did in fact get third place at IPL Faceoff. So already showing their skills together as a team. They do have Cruise of the Bruiser from Team Legion here subbing in for Mega Zero, who is unfortunately unable to be with us any further in this tournament, but they will have uh, the likes of Cruise of the Bruiser, who did in fact pick up that last game for Team Mar. Now, it uh, looks like uh, we have a little bit more of a global team of well, global presence represented uh, here by Team Marn. They do have a global ult from Nocturne as well as Twisted Fate. So they will have a CC in both top lane and bottom lane. You got the kick from Lee Sin as well as the cripple. And then you just have the uh, awesome knock up there from Alistar bottom lane on Atomic. Now Atomic and Echo, formerly of Team Lazura, definitely have made a name for themselves as a bottom lane in that team and are bringing their skills to Team Marn. And we'll be uh, dropping that down here tonight. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this. And it uh, looks like starting things off we will have a lane swap here from for not now big golem did just reset here but uh maybe that's the way you want to do it Loke has actually taken a fair amount of damage they definitely do want to split that up parole actually taking a few hits himself and so he will actually walk into lane at about half health getting a little bit of health back there from the large golem but this is a 1v2 situation and i think that's uh to be honest for not planned this out because anytime you pick yorick you're looking to be able to do really well in a 2v1 situation however team legion going for a cruiser uh Having Cruiser pick Lee Sin, also going to do pretty well in a 1v2 situation. The only exception to that rule being that uh, this is kind of the Azuba Blaze style. Not only do you do a lane swap, but you also pick Lulu for her pushing with Glitter Lance, and you also have uh, an AD carry with a lot of AoE wave clear. And you can get that in Sivir, you can get that in most commonly Graves, but as Graves was not available, it looks like Four Knots adding their own little sort of uh, twist to the strategy. Picking up Corky, you can AoE wave clear with his ults, with his Phosphorus Bombs, and also with Gatling Gun as well. So it looks like things are starting to uh, heat up a little bit here in the middle lane. You saw Clay GD pick up a blue buff. Shivana picking up her red. Looking to come around and do a little bit of counter jungling. Did she actually use smite? Yes, she did. So maybe uh, not looking uh, for some counter jungling. Maybe just looking for a gank and or some sort of jungle invade. There is the Valkyrie out. Cruise of the Bruiser actually doing a really good job at maintaining his health uh, so far in the midst of all this constant harass. It uh, looks like bottom lane in place of uh, the 1v2 top lane. We will have Echo and Atomic going 1v2 versus the Rain Man, who is actually doing a pretty good job on York. If we look at the CS, you can see that we have 5 to 5, so deadly even as far as that's concerned. But how will the pushing work out? Uh, is Lee Sin really going to be able to keep this wave off of the turret as uh, the top lane here for for not uh, decides to uh, scale up and uh, shove that in. I'm not too sure about that, but middle lane, we do have Marn facing off against Takashi X. If you guys haven't checked out Takashi's stream, definitely go check that out. He, uh, he's pretty hilarious and is uh, currently, I believe, in the middle of a middle lane marathon where he pretty much does what Dyrus did for top lane. It looks like, looks like there is the exhaust going down. Takashi missing the snare. There's the flash away. Marn narrowly escaping, but will he be able to get out of there? Turns around, throws down the stun card, but now Takashi's gonna get exhausted, gonna get ignited and will be first blood given to Clakey D. Takashi does, however, pick up Marn in the meanwhile. And oh my goodness, one bad Brad dangerously low, but makes it back to the safety of his turret in time. So that is a 1 1 start. Clakey D, however, picking up 100 extra gold after grabbing that first blood. Uh, the only difference being that the uh, first blood or well, the second blood, rather, I guess, uh, for uh, for not did actually go on to Takashi X, so he's going to just walk right back into lane with a Kage's Lucky Pick. So, Kage's Lucky Pick, not really the greatest item in the game. It does give you that gold per five, but it only gives you about five extra AP for 330 gold, so not really worth it as far as the cost uh, effectiveness is concerned. And man, look at Cruiser! 1v2 and almost picking up Locust. Uh, once he hits level six, that will be a definite possibility. However... 
Something for four not to uh, think about is that uh, Cruiser's gonna hit six before they do. So you can see him already jumping in, getting at CS off. He's getting harassed pretty effectively. Uh, actually, out of potions so far. So definitely should have gone cloth and five versus this lane, uh, just because that would have helped him uh, against this early harass. But speaking of early harass, look at this lane pushing here uh, from four not. They already have. Cruiser's turret down to about 200 health. You can see uh, even Shivana on one bad brat, or rather the other way around, uh, coming up here to just to make sure that the top tower for four not taken at five minutes and 24 seconds into the game. So that's uh, actually pretty impressive. You can see Rain Man uh, actually getting a lot of damage onto Atomic. There's Yellow coming down. Clanky D now taking the turret. One more turret shot, and there will be the kill. Sure, Yorick goes down, but so many turret shots. Actually, wow. Nocturne dies the turret. Echo flashing the turret just to make sure he gets out on the other side living with just about 70 HP. Now it does look like uh, one bad Brad and a shout out to the Prolly. Thank you very much. Uh, one bad Brad uh, clearing that middle lane as uh, I did see Takaji roam, roam bottom, looking for that kill pickup on either Echo or Atomic, both of whom make it back to the turret alive, and so they're going to get out of there easy peasy. The only uh, difference being that uh, one kill advantage secured after they picked up the Rain Man bottom lane. Now he does have a gold per five item. He's actually going to go top lane, and uh, they're doing this because they don't want to lose their bottom turn in. Uh, retaliation. I was going to say recompense, but that's just not a very good word. I mean, recompense makes you think of things like a uh, Tale of Two Cities or, um, I don't know, Scrooge McDuck or things like that. I'm, I'm not sure why, but it does. So there you go. And uh, so in retaliation, which is a much better word. Rain Man going back top lane. This is the way the game should have started out, except that uh, it's six minutes and 40 seconds. He doesn't have a turret to worry about. So already this early game pushing strategy working out really well from 4 Not There is the damage combo dropped onto Marn, but uh, one bad Brad actually getting caught out. Marn getting hit by the charm from Takashi X. However, at less than half health, actually about a third health there. Takashi will have to back out of there alive. He already has uh, the gold ticking down on Kage's lucky pick. So what will he uh, actually have earned? Earned about 80 gold. So it's about, uh, what, eight creeps? Uh, small creeps, I guess that is. Marn doing a really good job at uh, being able to shove out his lane. He's going to hit six. There it is. Six now procured, which is also a pretty darn epic uh, word. I don't think he actually got that last hit. I hate how Hunchback Magnificent Twisted Fate looks. I mean, he also kind of like waddles like a duck. I'm not sure what's up with that, but that's both mainly because of the isomor isomorphic or isometric uh, view scaling that we have so that if you actually look at these characters from like spot on Clakey D oh no Clakey don't do it they're pulling him right on top of his ward will he be in there in time for the smite yes he does pick up the smite you can see Takashi actually just kind of paused there he's like uh what I don't know what happened, but uh, Clanky D definitely does. Walks away with the smite and a fresh blue buff for himself. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of uh, the domination Clanky D unleashes with his Nocturne, though. But he is, in fact, king of the world as we know it. And uh, picking up a blue buff, definitely making a little bit uh, more of a claim to that fame. And uh, so, now that we've seen uh, Takashi, uh, not Takashi, Takashi lose his blue buff, he's going to be going up against Marn, who will be able to procure his own blue buff for himself. Now, he's going to drop a ward up there, and we're looking for some double ultimate global action or double global ultimate action I, I guess I can't really decide that at all uh, looks like they're gonna make a play here for the red buff they do actually procure that but do they know what Marn's positioning right now looks like a uh, cruiser coming down from top lane will they actually give that to cruiser no they're just gonna give it to Clakey D he finds one bad brat in the jungle there is the stun card the Q is down from cruiser the bruiser one bad brat not looking long for this world gets picked up there by Marn twisted fate picking up his first kill of the game at 1-1-1 one, one, and one with 42 CS. The real hero of this game, however, is Echo, who has just been absolutely able to free farm the crap out of everything, uh, sitting at 70 CS, highest CS in the game, along with his friend Atomic. So they're even going to go back after their lane pushes and pick up double golems to increase their CS lead, and uh, unfortunately they will always see... The small one left. Apologies for that. Uh, drinks of water are uh, apparently pretty effective after casting for like five hours today. But uh, as is, we're going to see Cruiser go ahead and uh, shove in this lane. He's actually doing a remarkably good job against the Rayman, who I definitely would have expected to... Uh, well, after having that rough bottom lane situation that definitely allowed bottom lane to snowball a little bit more, there's the Lulu ult on parole, but he just has nowhere to go. Will he actually be able to get out of here alive? Nocturne all is down, but he's just barely out of range. There's the Twisted Fatal trying to give him vision, but unfortunately that is not going to be effective enough. He does not make it out of their life, but bottom lane, 
Ego picks up low because I went to backspace just because we didn't actually see that kill on camera. Parole actually making it out alive, astonishingly enough. There is going to be the Twisted Fate teleport bottom lane. The <laughs> Flash makes Locust Juke back into the lane. Unfortunately, do not have Nocturne's ult completed, but that will nonetheless get picked up by Echo, who is absolutely destroying his lane. If we take a look at the gold count, we're going to see 3,200 already versus, yeah, nobody even close there uh, for uh, four not so sure they picked up that extra turret gold which is going to help them out but uh, is that really going to be what they're uh, you know as effective as the strategies that uh, team Marn are unleashing I don't really think so I mean Marn pretty much just said hey we're going to play this pretty normally pretty standardly and go for you know normal objective standard lane compositions and look at where it's put them you have a super farmed graves Echo just destroying all of that uh, looks like Clakey D in there uh, Marn will fall Takashi getting feared there Clakey D not in the greatest of positions he's going to Try to get the kill off on Takashi, but one bad Brad just huge in his dragon form, uh, picking up a double kill. Actually, no, Takashi got the double kill. Taking down Clakey D. One bad Brad just in there for the existence. Doesn't even have Riggles yet, but is now going to reveal that, oh wait, there is no blue buff to be counter jungled, and uh, we'll just uh, be able to uh, go for Wolf Camp. Yeah, that's up, so at least he'll be able to get a little bit for his trouble. There's the headbutt, the pulverized parole, able to get out of there. Atavik just looking to uh, harass as much as he can. Not Does not want to get a whole lot of damage down onto their bottom turret. Echo rejoins him in lane. Atavik's half health, uh, about uh, one-fifth mana, but still has enough for his uh, knockout. He does not have enough for QW, or does he? Yeah, he actually does. He needs about 1,700 to unleash that combo. But uh, top lane, there is the kick backwards. He lands the Q to be able to reveal Rain Man just a little bit, and then goes back in 1v2. He knows he is super strong. I don't understand how or why, but uh, apparently 1v2s make Cruiser a uh, beast at, uh, you know, among other things, like, uh, pretty darn good at this game. So, uh, you're at Ghoul, not able to follow Cruiser into the brush, and he's just going to... No, I thought he was going to go back and miss that wave, but he definitely wants to shove that into the turret before he pieces out. However, Yorick uh, will go back, and he will miss the rest of this wave. However, uh... I think I say however a little bit too much. Apologies for that one bad Brad coming back in the lane. He's only half health. What's the cooldown of Dragon uh, Rage? It's uh, about 50 more seconds, so it's not going to be able to uh, kill one bad Brad. He's just going to be able to pick up a little bit of extra CS here at turret. Looks like bottom lane as far as uh, everything is shaping up down there. Echo is just becoming a monster. He's 2-0 as a BF Sword, Dorans, and then also Lifesteal from that Vampiric Scepter and the Health Regen from a Health Potion with Vamp... Uh, not Vampiric Scepter, but uh, Berserker Greaves. Uh, pick one actually hits uh, Tavik in the brush, possibly revealing to... Uh, Team Marn, there is the teleport in, the Q, the W, looks like Locust getting knocked back into the enemy team, Plaguey picks up that kill, Atomic narrowly escaping with his life, takes true damage from Ignite, but does not fall, excellent job by Atomic getting in there with the CC, uh, Takashi is coming around the bottom side, or the back side of Dragon, and he won't be able to pick up Atomic, he's going to get out of there alive, but uh, with Plaguey, Echo, and Marn all pretty high health, I'm not exactly sure what Takashi is doing, he would be much better served going top lane, and looking to try to if you want cruise the bruiser however Lee Sin just so ridiculously strong right now he pretty much only has a uh, lifesteal and then that Doran's blade but already a bloodthirster picked up on echo look at that early bloodthirster you can be stay able to stack that up and whenever you get stacking items early in the game whether it's gold for fives or things like tears of the goddess or bloodthirsters war mogs anything along those lines you just start to scale ridiculously well. That's why uh, the old Rod of Ages was the preferred build because, hey, the thought was if you get this earlier on, if you get this as your first item, it's going to be stacking up. You're going to have a super awesome item later on in the game and it's going to scale up with you as you level. However, as uh, you know, things like Deathfire's Grasp and or uh, Deathcap Rushes are uh, have been more popular nowadays, uh, they're a little bit better of an option as they do deal ridiculous amounts of damage right when you pick them up rather than over time as far as scale is concerned. So if you're going for a scaling late game team, sure, go ahead and pick those up. Uh, otherwise, you're looking to pick up extra kills. Marn actually getting taken out. One for one trade as Echo comes in there. Will he be able to pick up the kill on parole? The exhaust is down. He's going to be able to get out of there as one bad rat jumps right on Echo. Will Echo be able to get taken out of here? There's no turret, but uh, looks like he just wanted to turn away onto Atomic. Uh, Might have thought that uh, parole was in danger. Clay D almost could have taken it out there with the Duskbringer, but uh, everybody just running at one another. Both mids just instantaneously uh, jib one another. There's the kick. Oh, he tried to kick Locust into parole, but rather Clakey D picks it up with the Duskbringer. How do you do it, Clakey D? Why are you so good at this game? Hugh Johnzo is in the house, and or Nocturnzo, depending on which game you are playing. Clakey D plays them all and does, uh, 
he does pretty well depending on where he's uh, he's currently located. I don't know. Doko desca, donde esta? But he is uh, he's uh, right here, right up in the phases of Fournat, and he's just kind of kicking him to the curb. He's 3-2. and two. Uh, Echo actually sitting at 3-0, and oh, free farming his way. Bottom lane is sitting at 122 CS. Already has a Bloodthirster. How much gold does this guy have right now? 5,500. Nobody even anywhere close. Only 2,700 on the support. Gold Provives has not quite kicked in. He's actually going to go for double gold Provives. I've seen a lot of recommendations that say, hey, why don't you just skip that heart of gold, go straight for something along the lines of Kindle Gem, and then just... Uh, further your uh your support build. The only reason you would do that, there is the teleport in from Mar. They're gonna get the stun off. Odd Kashi is actually super huge as Locust does drop his ult. Perfect positioning there from Locust. Knew exactly where the action was about to happen and uh, has his ult available to save Takashi X from the teleport in from Mar and all the CC from Atomic. Damage from Echo, not enough to pick up the kill. It does look like, uh, I mean, oh, there's the, actually the ult back in. They get the taunt. Atomic pops his ultimate. He's gonna, gonna be able to drop enough CC to pick that up. One bad Brad looking to be in here to pick up the kill. A uh, headbutt backwards. One bad Brad does get taken out. Locust could be the next to fall. Speeds himself away. Will the Dustbringer be enough? There's the flash of the gold card. Marn picks up Locust. It's 10 to 4 right now, guys. And oh my goodness, Marn. I don't even know. Like, to be honest, after they're showing an MLG, kind of more of a show match, just kind of talked a lot of trash, just to kind of hype up the situation. Nobody really took Marn that seriously, whether the person or the team. And now they come into the solomid.net invitationals, they lose first round at TSM, a little bit expected, and then they take out third place at IPL faceoff uh, Team Legion, procure their top laner in Cruiser the Bruiser to uh, come and help them out. And now they're going to. Well, they're looking really strong against Fornod uh, here in the second round of the loser's bracket in TSM's Solomid.net Invitational number 7. Clakey D coming over here, says Scumbag Atomic. Those are my raids. And uh, looks like Clakey D is going to roll around to his red buff. He will take that down as well. Uh, let's look at the rest of Team 4 Not. What do they have to do to come back in this game? I mean, sure, they're down about six kills. But if you look at the uh, gold count, also down about 7,000 gold as well. That's more like six or 5,500. Yeah, let's go with a conservative estimate, as I cannot do exact math right on the top of my head. Takashi roaming top lane. One bad Brad situated there as well. They really want to be able to do something. Thing about Cruiser of the Bruisers, but really just been doing whatever he wants basically this entire game. He even was not phased by a 2v1 situation, lost the turret early game, but uh, that really didn't hurt him that badly. He's been able to free farm pretty effectively against the Rayman, who really needs uh, that mana regen. He's in danger of getting died. The Bloodthirsters down there is the teleport. Cruiser of the Bruiser uh, had a little bit of extra help from Marn. Is this going to be enough to pick up the kill onto the Rayman? He just drops almost instantaneously. Atomic is here as well, and this will be Marn's counter push, uh, sort of countering that early first uh, early game shenanigans and there is the flash from Atomic he's gonna jump on a Locust but it is the gym on Mar Takashi able to get out of there wants to wait for that exhaust to go down Cruiser the Bruiser gonna get picked up here Takashi making a strong case for himself will Cruiser the Bruiser go down yes he will Tries to get the kick backwards from Dragon's Rage, but uh, looks like Atomic could be the next to fall. Looks like they do want to actually take down Echo. He is so farmed under exhaust. Will he be able to do enough damage? The pick up one kill. He picks up the double. One bad Brad under exhaust. Not able to take down Echo. Just absolutely murdering every single person on for naught. I'm not sure. I was, I was hearing away from the word murder, but uh, there's no other way to describe the utter obliteration. Uh, I was about to say decimated, but uh, when you consider that there are not 10 whole people on the team. I guess you could like multiply by two and say, hey, if he took out five, I don't even know how that math works. But uh, yeah, destroying everyone in his path. Echo is, this is what they didn't count on. Fornot is like, hey, we're gonna do this a uh, little bit of a cheesy strategy. It worked for Azubu Blaze, it could work for us, and it did work for them. They took a tower at less than five minutes into the game. I think it was like a five, 24 or something crazy like that but what they didn't count on is that graves super farm bottom got super huge picked up a couple kills and then it's just snowballing ridiculously hard and there is an 18 minute 49 second dragon for team marn they picked up baron no ward coverage on baron for team four not and now marn walks in the lane reveals oh snap we got Baron buff, and we're going to be able to push through, most likely, I mean, I wouldn't say to victory, but uh, it's pre-20 minutes and they have a dragon. This is what I 
would think, okay, well, we're done with early game, we're into mid game, but no, these guys just skipped that phase, went straight to late game, picked up Baron buff, bloodthirsters all around on both Lee Sin and Graves, and uh, yeah, between Cruise of the Bruiser and Echo, it's uh, it's not looking good for our heroes. He got a uh, five and two Nocturne. Surely since only one and one, but he has that bloodthirster, and even picking up another BF sword, just going all damage all the time. The stun card in on Locust. He's getting hit there by Cruise of the Bruiser. The perfect knock up all on Locust to keep himself from getting hit by Dragon's Rage. Atari getting DPS there. There is the damage done on Amar. Will he get taken down there? Yes, he will. The Rain Man takes him out, and all four not turning around here. Atomic has his old pop. He's going to be able to uh, CC the rest of the entire team. Takashi X looking to get out of their life. He's going to be able to make it. Locust also going to be able to get out of there, but no, Takashi dips right back in. He gets taken down by the Dustbringer from Clay D, and now it's Cruise of the Bruiser in the middle of the entire enemy team. What will happen here? It looks like Clinky D coated on the backside. Has enough damage to kill basically everybody. But Echo comes around in for the sandwich. A double kill. And oh my goodness. Team Marn, even with that sort of dubious engage, leaving only Locust to be able to get out of there alive. Three members still with Baird buff. They're shoving down the middle lane. And with 12 seconds left on Takashi, six on parole, and 20 plus on the rest of Team 4 Not. They will take down the first base turret of this game. Uh, seemingly unopposed. The first base turret will go down. There's the QW on a parole. They just want to push them out of the way so that they can't take down this inhibitor. Back on out of there. Drop a ward and then uh, say peace out. We want to go back to base. Double ward strap. That's a really good ward uh, positioning there. If you guys aren't familiar with this and don't know exactly why uh, uh, Marn would drop these wards here, this is so you can see, and there's actually two wards inside the base, this is so you can see where they're positioning to defend. If they want to defend top lane, you can see them going there or bottom lane as well. This is so that whenever they exit the base, you know exactly where Four Knots going. If they're going top jungle, bottom jungle, every single place they could possibly go. And it doesn't get much more clutch than this. Corky picking up his Infinity Edge, going that first instead of anything like a Trinity for his quirky man he is feeling the pain right now sitting at 157 cs one and two whereas then you look at echo and you realize oh wait this guy actually has something along the lines of oh, about 180 farm with uh bf swords on both bloodthirster and infinity edge with a zeal and red potion picked up as well so he's actually uh pretty strong i'd say you know seven and oh this guy definitely knows how to play ad carry uh made a name for himself like i mentioned with team lazura brought them a couple of tournament victories uh most notably in a go for all making it all the way to the final round against tsm so he's definitely had experience playing versus the very best play he actually ulting in here on to uh locust but uh is this actually going to be enough marn ulting in as well so much wave clear gap clearing gap closure i guess i would say the stun card up once again will be enough to pick up parole he was ulted there by the rain man so he's still gonna have a lot of damage to drop all over echo will echo actually go down here i think he actually will yes he does finally fall picking him up getting that bonus gold from the shutdown clicky d however comes in there picks up the ghost of uh, parole uh, before it actually dies there now with three members left alive for team marn and only takashi and locust actually i take that back takashi and locust should be able to hold them off here there is the exhaust but the cleanse uh pretty much lasts the same exact duration you're just gonna have to piece on out of here he does have a bloodthirster so he actually has a lot of lifesteal sitting at a 56 percent lifesteal that's uh you know slightly effective and uh, so actually going down to 39 once he does not have a uh, flurry pat proct with iron will Clanky D actually looking to turn around here, and he's going to have to turn around to uh, push the rest of Fordon off of him. He is ignited. Will he go down? He's just sustaining ridiculously long. One Bad Brad wants the 1v1 and finally able to pick up the kill. And now uh, One Bad Brad closing it on to Atomic. He's going to go down. A double kill for Parole. So things kind of turning around, but it's still 22 to 21, or 22 to 12. A uh, little bit of dyslexia there, and uh, 12,000 gold advantage. Uh, speaking of the number 12, uh, was that Brett Favre's number? I think, it, no, no, number four was Brett Favre. Uh, if you guys can remind me of who exactly in football was number 12, I will be extremely appreciative. Marn ulting top lane, looking to pick up the kill on one bad Brad. Will take him down there. He tried to lifesteal a little bit, but uh, no, unable to get that as uh, the fourth proc uh, from the stacked deck. Actually procking as well for Marn, assisting him in picking up that kill. Oh my goodness, everything going right for Team Marn this time around. They're just pushing through this top lane. Able to take down the second turret, and uh, with the first inhibitor down in the middle lane, uh, that's going to draw a lot of Four Knots attention there. Rain Man trying to shut things out, keep uh, the rest of Team Marn from pushing things in. But meanwhile, bottom lane, 
Echo just completely destroys that base turret. Nothing that uh, Fornod can do. They have to take care of the super minions in their base. They have to take care of top lane, but it does not look like they're going to be able to do that. All the base turrets are now down. Actually, oh my goodness. They leave that with a bat. Uh, yeah, 50 ex exactly HP out of uh, 2,500. So they were able to take down 2,500 of those HPs leaving it with only 50. I can do basic math. Uh, there goes Marn, gets the blue card, and actually only takes one turret shot in retaliation. So right now, it's looking a, bit, a little bit glim for our heroes. Glim? Dim? Gloomy? I'm not sure what that was. I think glim is actually a word, but I do not think it means what I think it means. Uh, Echo takes down the bottom inhibitor, and they're just split up 4v5. They have 90% of their damage. Bottom lane just AFK pushing inhibitors. And now one bad brat, Takashi gonna have to stay in that general area. Rain Man getting chunked, but so is Cruiser the Bruiser. There is the ult from Nocturne, trying to make it less easy for them to focus. Cruiser the Bruiser, and Clanky D comes down from behind. We'll be able to take down the Rain Man. Clanky D getting chunked there from the uh, Deathfire's grasp, but is it gonna be enough? He will go down, but he does have his ult on himself. Probably should have saved that for Echo, but Echo not available at the time. Look at Echo DPS the Rain Man. I don't actually think he's very long for this world. Clanky D surviving for the entire fight. Oh my goodness, this could actually be the game. Second inhibitor will fall in favor of Team Mark. GG's coming out offensively from Clanky D. Parole returns the favor. Nexus turrets under attack from Echo, and uh, yeah, GG's across the board. Will we see a surrender vote come out or are they just going to allow Team Martin to close out the game? First Nexus turret does fall and with only Takashi X left alive and actually Atomic soloing Takashi. Oh my goodness. Yeah, ow. That, uh, that hurt a little bit. Uh, Atomic stands up and this will be the end of the game. Atomic uh, or rather Clanky D has to get out from between the turrets but with super minions all the inhibitors down and a uh, Graves who is ridiculously far on your Nexus it will finally fall giving the game and the series to Team Martin, so congratulations to them and a good game, well played by Fortnite Gaming. Uh, it was really interesting to see their roster. Always love seeing the Rain Man back in action as well as looks from Dignitas. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Let me know what you thought. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to like, subscribe up above, and uh, let me know what you guys thought. I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys later.